Okay, so this project is called a texture rubbing. And the reason it's called a texture rubbing is that you are going to rub a crayon to transfer the texture onto the paper. And it's gonna make a final picture that looks like this. So you'll be able to see all these beautiful prints. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna to need to collect a few leaves. If they have big bumps and big grooves on them, they work the best. Even if they're broken like this, they still work really, really well. I tried to find a whole bunch of different ones, um, big and small. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the leaf and you're gonna put it with the bumpier side up, which is usually upside down. And you're gonna set it on your surface. And then you're gonna put your paper on top of it. And then you're gonna need a whole bunch of crayons. And for this to work the best, you want crayons that don't have wrappers on them. You want them to be totally clear of a wrapper because you're gonna use it flat to go side to side. So I'm, I know my leaf is right here and I'm gonna put my crayon down kind of like a log and I'm just gonna push. And it's gonna transfer the texture from the leaf underneath so you can see it on your paper. Isn't that neat? Okay, so once you have one done, you can continue with the same leaf. You could just change the shape or the orientation of it, um, or you can do a totally different leaf. Change the direction, pick a different color, and remember to hold your crayon flat, flat on its side. And if they overlap, that's fine too. You can still see both of them. I'm gonna try this one. This is a really fun project to do in the fall and to try to match the colors of the leaves that you're finding with the colors of the leaves that are outdoors. Okay, so you're just gonna continue in the same manner as you're going until you fill up your entire paper. I'll do one more of the big one. Do this one a dark one. Okay. Now you can be done with the project like this once you fill up the whole paper, or you can go on to a next step, which is called a watercolor resist. And the reason it's called a resist is that we're going to be using watercolor paints and the crayon that we already used to color the texture of the leaves in. But, if you notice, this bowl has water in it. This is just a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm gonna show you. The oil and water don't mix. So here's a little bit of science for today. Do you see how the oil just kinda stays there? And I can mix and 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 mix. But it will always come back apart. So, they resist each other. See all those oil bubbles in there? And the oil, if I could turn this sideways, is just floating on top. So the same principle goes with the watercolor paint. So this is our water, and the crayon has the oil in it. So when I take my watercolor paint, if I swirl and swirl and swirl, when I go to paint on top of my leaf, it resists wherever the crayon is. So the oil and the water don't mix. Isn't that neat? You don't have to paint in each individual little shape. You can paint right over the entire object. So crayons are wax, which is a type of oil, and the watercolor is made up of water, so they don't mix because it's a watercolor resist painting. And you can do this with oil pastel too. It works really, really well. And you're just going to paint over and fill in whatever you've already done until you have your whole paper complete. We'll do one more. Don't forget to wash your brush in between. Give this guy some orange. And if you find that it gets a little too heavy, just add a little bit of water or a little too thick. There you go. And then once you have it complete, you'll have an entire piece of art that looks just like this. So I hope you can get outside and find some beautiful leaves and come up with some different compositions. I can't wait to see what you make.